is not money but power. Money itself is a source of power. And that is why people have to do several things, sacrifices, rituals here and there, sometimes before they get money. Because money has power, money has spirit behind it. Hallelujah. So, today, the day one of these seven days of power, we shall be looking at Acts chapter 1, we quickly read from verse 4 to 8. Acts chapter 1, from verse 4 to 8. Acts chapter 1, we read from verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, Ye have heard of me. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. The King James Version. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. Verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. May God bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, after the death and the resurrection of Jesus, we see here the disciples coming to Jesus and saying, Jesus, now that things have turned out the way it is. You don't seem to be around us. How are we going to navigate through life? Remember, we have offended the authority. Remember, we have offended the world. Remember, we have offended the society by the reason of the teachings and the preachings that you sent us to do. Now that you are not going to be with us, how are we going to cope? And just like a conventional man, they began to think of what is the way, what is the next thing, what is the next, what is the next step to take? What is the next step? Where do we go from here? And many of us, like us, began to think of, okay, how do I live? And they came to Jesus and said, the kingdom you promise us, what when is this kingdom going to come? Because now that you are not around, we need to fend for ourselves. And Jesus said, you are missing it out. Your priority is wrong. You don't need to run after the material things. You don't need to run after the kingdom. But the main thing you need to look for now is go and receive power. Go hide yourself somewhere and make sure you don't show your faces until you have received power. That is the only antidote. That is the only security you will have in this world. And the same thing goes to you and I today. Power is the only security you and I have. The currency we spend is not money. The currency we spend is not time. But the currency we spend is power. For example, like a man of God was explaining, if you come to me and say, sir, please, uh, I, need, I need a car. I need a car. Okay, there are two ways that car can get to you. Number one, I can give you, if I have, I can say, okay, take one of my cars. Then by that, you have gotten what you want. But another way, which is far better, is if I say, okay, how much does this car cost? You say it costs four million, it costs five million, okay? And I tell you, take the four million, take the five million. Now, once I do that, I did not give you the car, but I have empowered you to get the car. And by this second approach, which is not me giving you the car, but giving you the money, that gives you, number one, the choice to buy the car you want, not the one I am giving you. 
Because that money I've given you has empowered you to determine, to decide the kind of car you want, to decide the color, to decide everything. So that is what power does. Power gives you that ability to do. It gives you the ability to decide. It gives you the ability to choose. The same thing when it comes, not only that, the currency God himself spends is power. The currency God himself spends is power. Amen. When God wants to bless somebody, when you stand and say, God, please, I need money. Lord, bless me with money. Lord, bless me with money. Excuse me, beloved, understand. God is not going to begin to throw bales of dollars at you. He's not going to begin to throw bales of naira. No, no, no. He's not going to begin to throw bales of pounds to you. No. He will not do that. What God will do, although you are asking him for money, what he will do is to empower you, give you the power. That is why Deuteronomy 8.18 Deuteronomy 8.18 says, you know, you shall remember the Lord, the Lord your God because he is the one that giveth you power to make wealth. He will not throw the physical money at you. He empowers you. He gives you the power to make that wealth. So that is the currency God himself spends. Power is the currency God spends. Hallelujah. So power is the currency God himself spends. When God was to bless Abraham, God did not throw money at Abraham. No. In blessing Abraham, God gave Abraham a power. God gave Abraham the ability. Now, when uh, uh, Abimelech took Abraham's wife, Abimelech took Abraham's wife, and God said, Abimelech, for touching Sarah, the wife of Abraham, you are going to pay him a trespass offering. And this trespass offering was such that Abraham became rich through that. So that was power at work. When God was to bless Isaac, God did not begin to throw money at Isaac. No. What God did to Isaac, God gave Isaac the power, the ability to sow and to reap hundredfolds the same year. Genesis 26. The ability to sow and the ability to reap hundredfold the same day. That was how God empowered Isaac. When God was to bless Jacob, because the Bible says Jacob was, uh, Abraham was great, Isaac was very great, and Jacob was exceedingly great. When God was to bless Jacob, God did not begin to rain money at Jacob. No, God did not begin to throw money at Jacob. What God did was to give Jacob the power. God gave Jacob the wisdom. God gave Jacob the ability to determine the kind of animals, the kind and the quality, the color, the quality of the animals that must be produced. And that was how God blessed uh, Jacob. So in the same vein, power is the currency God spends. Hallelujah. When you are praying to God and say, God, make me great. God, make me great. God, make me great. You will, not, you, you will not wake up suddenly and the whole world is clapping for you. No, 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 no. God looks at a specific aspect of life. He empowers you in that area. And then through that, he makes you great. I pray for somebody hearing me. The Lord will empower you to become great in the mighty name of Jesus. So the point we are saying is that in our world, Power is the currency we spend. God himself, power is the currency he spends. And that is why Jesus looked at the disciples and said, power is what you need. Don't ask me about the kingdom. When you have the power, you will get the kingdom. And so that is why this week is very, very, very key. It's very, very important. And I pray for somebody hearing me. The Lord will empower you this week. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. the Lord will empower you. Amen. So God himself, the power, it, is, it is power that God spends. The currency God spends is power. That is why 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. 2 Peter 1 3. He said, according as his divine power, you know, according as his divine power had given unto us 
all, you know, he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and unto godliness, according as his divine power. He has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and unto godliness. Are you getting the point? So, in giving us all things, he didn't throw, he didn't open a big warehouse and say, these are all things you need. This is food. This is money. This is, no, 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 no. He packaged everything into power. As according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. So, power is the currency God himself spends. Hallelujah. That was why in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. Apostle Paul was talking. He said, my preachings, my teachings, they are not in the enticing words of men, but in what? In the demonstration of the power of God. Hallelujah. So, that is what we are talking about. Somebody say power. Somebody say power. Power. Power is very, very important, especially in these last days. As a matter of fact, in these last days, we are in the days of demonstration of his power. We are in the days of the demonstration of what? Of his power. And that is why people go to any extent to fortify themselves. Some people go, they use human blood, they bait themselves with human blood. Why? Because they want to be fortified. And that is why you and I as children of God will have to continuously and regularly cry to God for power. Somebody say power. Hallelujah. So, for the sake of this teaching for this week, power is generally classified into three. There are three classes of power, three classifications of power. When we talk about power, power is categorized into three different categories. And I want you to understand this. Hallelujah. So, according to the Greek word, there are three classes of power. Number one, the first type of power is the one that I call esousia. E X O U S C I A, exousia. That is the first classification of power, exousia. When we talk about exousia, exousia talks about the power that is a delegated authority. Exousia is, it, it, it refers to a delegated authority. It is a power that gives you, uh, uh, that gives you the authority. Amen. It is a power that makes you to become. That is why John chapter 1 verse 12, Jesus said, as many, in Paul, what John was writing, talking about Jesus, he said, as many as believe in him, to them gave him what power to become. So that is, when we are talking of power to become, we are talking of esousia. So it is the power that makes you. Amen. So when they say somebody is the director for so, 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 and so, and so, the power that man has is esousia. It is, the, it is a delegated authority. It is a power that gives you the ability to act in a particular position. That is the first category of power. So that is called esousia. The second type of power is the one we call dunamis. Dunamis. So dunamis is, uh, the, dunamis is the ability to do. The, apart from uh, esousia, remember, is, is, is something that makes you, it makes you become. When they say somebody has been promoted from the assistant director or deputy director to the director, the person, that's what you have received from one position to another, is exousia. But dunamis is the power that gives you the ability. Are you getting the point? You remember in science, when we are defining power, when we say power is the ability to do work. Okay, so that one you are receiving is what is dunamis. And that is what, what Acts chapter 1 verse 8 talks about. Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem, and you know, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall become witnesses unto me. So what Jesus was referring to there is that you need dunamis. Dunamis is the power to do, is the power to act. It is the power that enables you, it gives you the ability to do something. It energizes you, you know, to do something. That is what we call dunamis. That is the second type of power. The, the third type of power is the one we call the kratos. K-R-A-T-O-S, the kratos, kratos. Kratos is, you know, this is the power to dominate. Kratos 
is the power to dominate. Kratos is the power to rule. And listen to me, Kratos is the highest kind of power. Kratos is the highest type of power that we have. And it is Kratos that God uses. When God said to man in Genesis chapter 1, when God was talking, he said, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let him rule, let him dominate. The power God was giving man then is the Kratos power. The power to dominate, the power to rule. And this is the, this is the, the, the ultimate of all the powers. Because then when Esosia makes you become, Dunamis gives you the ability to act. And listen to me, you can be, you can be a director in, a, in, in an establishment. And you can, be, you can be as powerless as anything. Amen. We have it, we have had situations where somebody will be president. And the deputy or the vice president, president will be more powerful than the president. So that president has exosia, the power that, that confers him, that, that makes him as the president. But he does not have the dunamis, which is the ability to act. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Amen. So these are the three categories of power. The first one is the exosia, the power to become. Amen. Then the second one is the dunamis, the power to do, the ability to do. And then we have the third one, which is the kratos, the power to dominate, the power to rule. And I pray for somebody this week, the Lord will empower you in the mighty name of Jesus. I said the Lord will empower you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So all the powers we shall be looking at this week, they shall be hinged on this, they shall be, the, you know, under these three categories. We will look at, we will ask, we will, we will ask for a sozia, power that will make us become whom we are supposed to be. One can be in this world and you are not whom you are supposed to be. If you are supposed to be level 15 and you are still operating at level 8, you are not who you are supposed to be. And that is what Esosia does. It takes you from where you are not supposed to be and it elevates you to where you are. Many of us, by the grace of God this week, the Exosia power of God will take you from where you are and will place you to where you belong in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So those are the three categories we, under which we shall be looking at power. And by the grace of God, uh, because of the sensitivity of this program this week, now, the, you know, we are fasting for the next seven days from Monday today to Sunday. Now, today, tomorrow, we will do the normal fasting. Hallelujah. Because we are looking at Esosia. You, you can eat your, eat your pepper, eat your oil, do everything. So Monday, Tuesday, from Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we are going to be doing white fasting because that is when we will enter the level of the Kratos power. Is somebody getting me? Amen. So, Wednesday, day three, day four, day five, we'll be doing white fasting. White fasting means no oil, no pepper, no, uh, no salt. Amen. So, that is what we shall be looking at then. Uh, by Saturday, we will come back to fruit alone. And by Sunday, we will round it up. Hallelujah. Listen to me. You will never remain the same again. Amen. So, we are talking about the th three types of power. Today, we want to center on exosia, which is the power to become. Somebody say the power to become. So, it is a delegated authority. When we talk about exosia, it is delegated authority. It makes you become another person. In John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse number 12. Let's look at John chapter 1 verse 12. Jesus, I mean, Paul, John was writing. John 1 12. That is the exosia power we are looking at here. But as many as received him, to them gave he what? Power to what? To become the sons of God. 
even to them that believe on his name. So the power you receive here when you come to Christ is the associa power. It is the power to become. It is the power that translates all, that, you know, that translates a person from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of their light. Okay? So that is the power we are talking about. That is the, the first type of power we shall be praying for today. Power to become. When you are where you are not supposed to be, you need a sozia to become who you are supposed to be. Power to become. So John was telling the people that if you want to become a changed person, you want everything all around you to look different, then you receive exousia. You receive the power to become. I pray for somebody today. The power to become shall rest upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say power to become. Power to become. The same thing in Luke chapter 10 verse 19. In Luke chapter 10 verse 19. He said, behold, Jesus said, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpent and upon scorpion and upon all the powers of the enemies and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So that is exosia. That power makes you immune to every satanic arrow. That power makes you, you know, it, 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 you know, it, it encompasses you with touch not anointing. Luke 10, 19. Hallelujah. So, that is what this power is talking about. The power to become. I pray for somebody. Let the power of God fall upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And let that power make you become untouchable for any power of darkness in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say, Father. Father, Say, Father, Father, empower me Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to talk to God. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to talk to God. Oh, Lord, my Father, empower me in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, man de kapa sandalia. In brokoto mama masen keteli daba. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now, when Jesus was to send the disciples out, He said, "Behold, I give unto you power to trample upon serpent and upon you know upon serpent and upon all the powers of the enemies, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you." That is the power. This was the power Paul demonstrated in Acts chapter 28. In Acts chapter 28, when they got to that highland called Molita, the Bible says Paul got joined the people and they were gathering sticks so that they could make fire to warm themselves. And all of a sudden, the Bible says one serpent, one viper, one arrow from the pit of hell coiled itself round the hand of Paul. Amen. And the moment that happened, people began to look. They say, oh, this wicked man, he just escaped shipwreck. Now look at him now. See where he is now. Look at it. Judgment is still pursuing him. And the Bible says, those, those barbarians were waiting for when Paul was going to fall down and die. The Bible says they looked and they looked. Instead of Paul falling down, because there was power in him, he was empowered. All Paul did was to shake the beast. He shook that serpent into the fire. And the people were looking. The people were wondering. They were looking at when he was going to fall down and die. When they did not see him fall down and die, the people turned to themselves. They said, oh boy, this man is not an ordinary man. He is a God. Meaning that he is not a, a, a natural person like us. He has exousia in him. There is power to become. I pray for somebody hearing me. In the mighty name of Jesus, the power of God will turn you to an untouchable being. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Listen to me. That is why when somebody carries exousia, you don't, you don't toil with any man of power anyhow. You don't talk with a man of power anyhow. You will surely pay for it. Hallelujah. 
Amen. And the reason why you see people, uh, this one wants to go up, this one is pulling the person down, is because you have not received power. Him, the, that man called Haman, the one we were looking at yesterday in our Sunday service. Haman went and received power. What was the power Haman received? In, in, in Esther chapter 3 verse 1, the Bible says, And it came to pass that King Ahasuerus promoted Haman. That promotion from a, not an ordinary Haman to Haman the chief was an exosia. He received a delegated authority. And the moment Haman was promoted, the first thing he did was to sign an agreement with the king for him to destroy, to terminate the Jews. Why? Because he had received power. And when somebody receives such kind of power, you too, you need a greater authority to counter what he has done. But, you know, Mordecai and the Jews, all of them, they got to know of it. And when they got to know of it, they did not sit down and begin to cry. Because here was one Haman who has received power, satanic authority, to deal with the Jews, to destroy them. What did the Jews do? In Esther chapter 4, in verse 1, the Bible says, when Mordecai perceived what was done, he didn't keep quiet. He didn't start crying. He knew that Haman was, to, was you know, wanted to deal with them because he had power. Haman wanted to deal with them because he had a satanic exosia. What did they do? In Esther chapter 4 from verse 15 to 15 and 17, the Bible says, he went to Esther. He said, Esther, let us act. Esther said, I understand. We need power. You people go and be doing prayer and fasting. Go and be fasting. I too will go into fasting. And they began to pray. They began to fast. Just like you and I are doing this week. By the time they too received power, authority that was above authority, what later happened? They demoted Haman. They finished Haman. They terminated Haman. At the end of the day, they possessed their possessions. Wherever you are, lift up your hand. Say, oh God, my father. Oh ah, say, oh God, my father. Oh God, my the father. power to terminate my Haman. Release upon me this week. Go ahead and begin to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Say, God, empower me. God, fill me with power. God, fill me with authority. In the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. The reason why they are still pushing you up and down in that office is because you have not received power. Amen. When you see people who have power, when you see people who have authority, Nobody toils around with them anyhow. Ah, I pray for somebody hearing me. Today, the Lord will empower you Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Today, the Lord will fill you with his power Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say power. power. Somebody say power. power. Somebody say power. power. So, that is with the power to become. It makes, it changes you from who you used to be to a different person. Power to become. Hallelujah. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, when you read verse 9 to 13, 1 Samuel chapter 10, let's quickly look at it from verse 9. 1 Samuel chapter 10 from verse 9. And so it was that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God did what? Gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass. When Saul was to be made king. Saul was an ordinary person. Although physically, Saul was tall. He was lanky. He was, he, he, he was huge. But there was no power in him. He was an ordinary uh, son of Kis, the Benjamite. Amen. He was an ordinary son of Kis. Hallelujah. So, but this was somebody who was going to become the king of Israel. And without... A certain power come upon him, he was not going to have that authority to rule. 
And that authority must come on him. And so God sent, directed Saul to the house of Samuel. And when he got there, the Bible says in that first Samuel chapter 10, if, in the verse 1, the Bible says when he came and saw uh, Samuel took him and anointed him and poured oil on him. And after anointing him, Samuel said to Saul, he said, Saul, today something new has happened. And the Bible says, and uh, uh, verse 9, and it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another, another heart. He became a different soul from the soul that went to Samuel. He became a different soul from the soul that was anointed. Hallelujah. So that is what exosia does. It changes you. It makes you another man. Look at verse 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10. Let's continue from verse 10. And when they came hither to the hill, what happened? Behold, a company of prophets met him. And the Spirit of God came upon him. And he did what? He prophesied among them. Because, they, they, because power has come upon Saul. Saul met a company of prophets. And then that anointing upon him, you know, you know, attracted and magnetized a prophetic power upon him. And Saul too began to prophesy. Verse 11. And it came to pass, when all that knew him, before time saw, they went, when they saw that, what happened? Behold, a prophesy among the prophet. Now, what did the people say one to another? Then the people did what? The people said one to another. What did they say? What is this that is come unto the soul of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophet? Hallelujah. He has become a different person. They used to know him as Saul, the son of Kish. They used to know him as an ordinary person who was just among them, who was going about his normal business. But when power came upon him, when Exousia fell upon him, he became another man. Now listen to me. I'm not, now let's go, to, let's go to verse 12. And one, of this, and one of the same place answered and said, one of the same place answered and said, but who is their father? Verse 12b. Therefore, it was, it became a proverb. Is Saul also among the prophets? Verse 13. And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the world, to the high place. Hallelujah. Look at it. After Saul was anointed by Paul, the, I mean by Samuel rather, Saul was anointed by Samuel. And the Bible says the power of God came upon him and he became a different being. He became a different person. And everybody who saw him, they saw, ah, see, is he not Saul, the son of Kish? See the way he too is prophesying. He had joined the company of prophets. Listen to me. In those days, without you going to the school of the sons of the prophet, without going to the school of the sons, you know, without going to the school, without enrolling in the school with the sons of the prophet, you don't become a prophet. And they never saw a time that Saul enrolled in the school of the sons of the prophet. He was never among the sons of the prophet. And so, how did he suddenly become a prophet who was prophesying among the prophet? Remember, he was not among the sons of the prophet. He was among the what? The prophet himself. When the power of God comes upon you and you become a different person, people, what protocols people follow? You don't need to follow protocol again. You become a man without protocol. When, you, when, you know, when the court tell people, they say, okay, you must do X, Y, Z before you get this. When it comes to your turn, they say, wave it. Give her a waiver. Give him a waiver. That one doesn't matter. Why? Because you are a different person. They suddenly saw Saul among the prophets, not among the sons. They began to prophesy. And people began to touch one another. They said, hey, hey, come and see something. Everybody come and see. Come and see wonders. And everybody came. They said, what happened? They said, look at that man prophesying among the, among the prophet. He saw also a prophet. And he became a proverb in Israel. He saw also among the prophet. We never saw him enrolling. 
How come he became one of the prophets? How did that happen? Exousia fell upon him. Power fell upon him. Lift up your hand wherever you are. Say, oh God, my father. Oh God, my father. Empower me today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mande Sanda Yagadababaha. Legebo Morogoboma Santa Yagaba. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Badeli Hamprogodobo Shataraba. Zegedele. In the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, in the name of Jesus, begin to talk to God, my Father, my God, empower me today, in the name of Jesus, 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 in the in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen. excuse me the reason why they are using one law uh, it is when it is time for your promotion they will say no um, promotion this one happened this one happened it is because you have not received power when you receive power protocols will see you and they will make way because Saul had received power protocols that you must first of all obtain from you must be screened you must go to the school of the sons of prophet. You must pass through class one. You must spend three years doing certificate. You must spend another five years doing diploma before you can become a prophet. All those protocols did not stand when Saul became a prophet. Why? There was a power upon him. I pray for somebody. Every satanic protocol hindering your progress. Every satanic protocol tying you down when good things are to come. Power will take you above them today. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Power to become. Power to become. Hallelujah. The power to what? The power to become. In 2 Kings chapter 2. Power to become. 2 Kings chapter 2. Let's look at verse 15. After Elijah, when Elijah was to go, Elisha began to pursue him. Elisha began to run after him. Amen. And Elisha got the power. He got the mantle of Elijah. And the moment before that could happen, all the sons of the prophet at Bethel, at Jericho, at Jordan, all of them, they had gathered. They were looking at Elisha. Some of them even came to him and said, Elisha, are you aware that your God is taking away your master today? Elisha said, don't worry yourself. I am aware. And they said, okay, shall be this one that you are doing gree gree. Uh, I, am the, I am the son of Elisha, Elijah. Uh, wherever Elijah goes, I go. The ground. They came to meet him and they bowed themselves what? To the ground. Remember, this was the same Elisha. They were all moving together. They were mates. Elisha was, in this, was one of the sons of the prophet. So they were mates before now. But all of a sudden, when power came upon Elisha, the Bible says his colleagues, amen, in the school of the prophet, 
they came and they bowed themselves. I pray for you, as the Lord liveth before whom we are, the power and the authority that we make people bow for you. The mighty hand of God releases upon you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible did not say they bowed. If you look at that statement very well, they bow themselves. <laughs> what did they do? Let's look at it. And bow themselves what? To be grand before him. There is a, they did not, there, there are different ways of bowing. Amen. For example, look at me. What is that? I bow. Am I right? Am I? Eh? I bow. The kind of bowing they bowed was that they prostrated because they went to the ground. That is what happens when a Susia falls upon you. Lift up your hand, begin to cry to God. My Father, my God, let your power fall upon me. Go ahead and begin to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to cry to God. Oh God, fill me with your power. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Bagada Maliaga Sandaria Catabaragada. Leke Bobom Brogodomo Soto Borigadea Cassanda. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Basaidica Masindarica. In Brogodoli Baba Baba Baba. Leko Sakaya Mancaturia Gada. Leke de Moncaturi Gadaba Sataliha. Regge de Gadamacaturi Gadaba Sentiria Gadabaliha. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. That was verse 15 of Second Kings chapter 2. Amen. The Bible says, the sons, the other sons of the prophet, they came and they what? They bowed to him. Please look at verse 19. It did not end here. Look at verse 19 of 2 Kings chapter 2. After the sons of the prophet came to bow to him, verse 19, 1, 2, 3, go. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant as what? They didn't say as Elisha said. As my Lord said. But the water is not and the ground is barren. Excuse me. Apart from the sons of the prophet coming to bow to Elijah, to Elisha, the men of the city of Jericho, the elders, they gathered themselves together and they walk up to this young boy. They said, oh, our Lord, oh, sir, our daddy in the Lord, our father himself. Please, you can see that the situation of this city is a well-located city, but the water is bad. People are dying from cholera. People are dying from affliction. Please, can you help us? When the power of God comes upon you, you that was irrelevant before, you become a person people are running after. Listen to me. When you are loaded, you will be needed. When you are loaded, you will be needed. I pray for somebody today. The Lord will load you with his power. Amen. The Lord will load you with his anointing. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. begin to pray and talk to God. My Father, my God, the power to become, let it fall upon me. Go ahead and begin to pray. Rise up on your feet, begin to talk to God. My Father, my God, anoint me with fresh power. Anoint me with fresh anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. The power that will take me from where I am. The power that will relocate me to where I belong. Let it fall upon me today. Let it fall upon me today. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God. Le manga baka sandaria. Begin to cry to God. The reason why men are still cheating you, the reason why men are taking over what belongs to you, is because you have not received enough power. Begin to pray today. My Father, my God, fill me with your power. Fill me with your anointing. Mandeka zaka mariga da kasandaria. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your anointing. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to talk to God. Maseke tele de bobo. Yenge de bobo mbaga da maskende riaba. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh, begin to pray the Lord, 
Masakatali Hadabam. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to talk to God. Men are cheating me. Men are not giving me what I deserve. I am not where I supposed to be. Baba, give me power. The power to become. The power that will make me the one you have made me to be. Makasa kandaliaka. In the marabou son to boreka sandaria. In the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God. Oh God, empower me. Oh God, empower me. In the mighty name of Jesus. I need power. My Father, my God. I need power. Maseka pa maseka tiri kasa kandaria. Oh mane gede gede gede. Lembrozo to boreka sanda. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to talk to God. God, I need power. What I need today, Father Lord, empower me. My Father, my God. Oh God, empower me. My Father, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We are going to pray and talk to God. Anything in me ah, that will hinder me from receiving this power, I destroy it out of my life. Prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray that anything that may hinder, anger will hinder you. You know what? Laziness, inability to pray, they will hinder a person from receiving power. A life that is not righteous will hinder. Oh, begin to pray that God, anything in me, ah, maseka pa mazandaria, that may hinder me from receiving power today, that may hinder me from receiving power this week. Let the blood of Jesus destroy them out of my life. Let the blood of Jesus flush them out. Mauri kazada moke in the mighty name of. Of Jesus, who Badama Siga Daraba Satandaria, Repo Popo Masandari Kaza, Imba Saka Dali Mankatiri Adaba, Reke de Boma Saka, Lakunda Rababa Moskendri de Bo, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh Baba 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 Baba, Yeke de Gede Gede Gede, Lembro Sotori Gadayaba, Imbra Gadama no Dodo Shata, in the Rababa Banama Marie de Debo, begin to pray begin to pray in jesus name we pray amen are men looking down on you are men de depriving you denying you of what belongs to you amen is there somebody who has vowed that over his or her dead body <laughs> will you make it in life that was the condition Mordecai and the jew found themselves when a man wanted to terminate them to, ex, you know, to, to exterminate and destroy all of them. But the main, the main thing they did was to go into prayer, into fasting. God empower us. The power that will make us overcome our enemies, release upon us. Beloved, after they fasted and prayed, they got power. By the time they came back, the Haman that was to hang Mordecai, he was hung on the same gallow that he had prepared. Amen. On the same gallow that he had prepared. What was not, what the, um, Mordecai could not get before. Mordecai had helped the king. Nobody remembered him. But when power came, by force, by force, Mordecai was remembered. Listen to me. The reason why they are still running after you. The reason why they are still standing against you. The reason why they are still denying you of what belongs to you, of your benefit, of your promotion. It's because you don't have power. When you receive power today, by force, by fire, every human in your office, every human in your business, they will bow. Finally, you will cry to God again. My Father, my God, empower me today. Release your power upon me. Let your anointing fall upon me. Go ahead and talk to God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, empower me. Release your fresh fire upon my life. Release your fresh anointing upon me. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Stretch forth your hands as we pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you because every power in heaven and on earth has been given unto you. We stand today and we connect with that power. Your associate power, the power to become. 
Baba, I release upon us today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When that power came upon Mordecai and the Jews, their destinies were transformed. Amen. But by the same anointing, let the destiny transforming power be released upon every one of us today in the name of Jesus. Amen. When that power came upon Saul, Saul could do what he ordinarily wouldn't have been done. Pro protocol bowed before Saul. We pray by the anointing from above. Every protocol holding you down, let them bow today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the power of God locate you. Amen. Let the anointing of God locate you. Amen. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Of I decree Jesus. that today, the second day of May 2022, heaven will smile upon you. Amen. Every obstacle on your way shall make way. Amen. The Lord will move you forward. Amen. That which you could not do, places you could not enter, as the anointing of God transformed the life of Saul, the power of God is transforming you today. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Please. Amen. This program continues at 6 p.m. Remember, it is 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. with fasting. And like I said, today we will do our normal fasting. We will break with whatever we want to break with. Tomorrow, Tuesday, the same thing. But from Wednesday, it's going to be white fasting. What did I say? White fasting. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. White fasting, no oil, no salt, no pepper. Hallelujah. So that is when we enter the dunamis and the kratos level of power. So please, then by Friday, we will go on fruit alone. Hallelujah. That one, the blessings of God shall be released upon every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. So, 6 a.m. tomorrow, please don't forget. Now, uh, this program.